good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral and Bethlehem Chapel on this Wednesday, November 16th. My name is Patrick Kieser and it's my pleasure to be with you this morning for this service of prayer. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. From Psalm 150. Hallelujah. Praise God in his holy temple. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our reading this morning comes from the Revelation to St. John, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open, and the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. And the one seated there looks like jasper and carnelian, and around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human face, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside, Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne, singing, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. The book of Revelation is by any estimation one of, if not the most unique book in all of Scripture. John Calvin, a scriptural commentator of unique ability and renown, didn't write a commentary on this book, the only significant New Testament book he chose not to write about, a telling comment on the text, I think. If we're honest, there are some portions of it that are plain, strange, very difficult to understand. Others are troubling, in many cases attempting to overanalyze them in any depth proves to be an altogether fruitless task. That being said, Revelation also contains some of the most beautiful images and texts in all of Scripture. We catch glimpses of that here in the fourth chapter, which we just heard in its entirety. The author narrates a vision of that which is ultimately beyond all human understanding, heaven. Words and images are bound to be insufficient, yet here is the author's attempt. The writer describes when sitting on a throne with a multitude surrounding and offering worship and praise. We hear mention of four living creatures full of eyes with six wings like the seraphim mentioned in the book of Isaiah. These four living creatures are described as like a lion, an ox, a human face, and an eagle, which it might be interesting to note are the four traditional symbols of the evangelists. Mark, Luke, Matthew, and John, 
respectively. These creatures sing without ceasing the song, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This too is similar to the seraphic hymn from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Of course, it's also familiar to us, as it's very similar to the text of the Sanctus, that piece of music we sing at each Eucharist in the course of the Eucharistic prayer. For those of us who have so regularly worshipped in the Episcopal Church, we can just take for granted this piece's placement in the liturgy and not really think much on it. But if we stop and consider the connection, something really quite astonishing and beautiful is revealed. In a very real way, in that moment of the Eucharist when we sing the Sanctus, we are joining our voices with those heavenly throngs who sing that same song without ceasing. For a moment, heaven and earth are brought even closer together. This is an understanding of worship that's very important in the Orthodox tradition. Anyone who has joined for an Orthodox liturgy will have experienced that way in which heaven seems to be brought to earth, or perhaps even better put, we are lifted into heaven in the course of the liturgy. So next time you join for the celebration of the Eucharist, perhaps this Sunday, I hope you'll think on this connection, and I hope too that you will remember the truth that the veil between this world and the world beyond is so much thinner than our rational-minded sensibilities would suggest. The almighty and merciful God we worship is not constrained to a far-off heaven, but dwells among us each and every day. And now I invite you to join with me and pray the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one of us may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Now in the silence to follow, I invite you to offer your own prayers. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. <laughs>